wow, that's bright. So I'm going so I'm going to stay on this side or I'm going to be blinded. We've certainly come a long way. We've certainly come an enormous way since we since we first met in Vienna, Austria in 2007. I'd like to dedicate this quite emotional closing keynote to one of the organizers of the 2007 event who sadly is no longer with us. Florian Hofsky was the founder of the Austrian Pirate Party and one of the most emotional and inspiring people, people I have ever had the privilege of getting to know. So Florian, in loving memory. Why are you here? Seriously, I, I mean, it's a serious question. Why are you here? Are you dumb? Are you stupid? Everybody knows, everybody knows how you change the world. We've all learned that. You write a letter to the editor in your local newspaper, and you're happy if they publish it, and so you've done your little bit of changing the world. Who is out of their mind and actually goes to start a political party and think they can accomplish something? Are you dumb? Let me know. L let me tell you why I'm here. 120 years ago, a couple of young activists thought it was unjust that, according to the establishment, you should obey the king and the church. And that they thought that individuals had certain rights that the king and the church really couldn't trample on. So they, they started to form a movement, and at that point everybody demanded an answer of them. Come on now, you've got to take a stand here. Do you prefer more power to the king or more power to the church? And, but these people that were forming a political party, liberals as they call themselves, said that you don't understand. We're bringing new ideas to the table here. I think we're, we're going to form a political party and contest the elections. And the establishment went completely insane, saying, you can't form a political party just because you don't want to obey the king. Are you out of your minds? You're just spoiled brats who want everything for free. Well, they said, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let us explain. And so around 1890s, liberals went headway into many parliaments in Europe and established ideas like voting rights for all and certain inalienable rights for the individuals that hadn't been there before. That was 120 years ago. Fast forward 40 years, and a couple of young activists thought they saw something unjust in society. They started to think that that maybe they had certain rights as workers that weren't really respected and, and uh, confirmed by the establishment. Maybe if they organized, maybe they, they could get certain ideas through that was for the better of all society. And at that point, the uh, king and the church were no longer one and the same, were no longer opposite poles on the political spectrum. They had become conservatives. And the liberals, that appeared 40 years ago, was the new opposite. So the establishment went to these new politicians, as they dared call themselves, and asked, okay, so you've got to explain here. You've got to take a stand. Are you with the conservatives or the liberals? And the workers' movement said, that, well, it's not really that simple. We, we sort of bring new ideas. And when they finally founded a party... The establishment, went, the establishment went absolutely insane, saying, you can't start a new party just because you want higher wages. Are you out of your mind? You can't do that. You're just spoiled brats who want everything for free. Well, they said, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let us explain. That was 80 years ago. 
In the 1930s, Labour, Labour parties and social democratic parties came into parliaments pretty much all over Europe. Fast forward another 40 years, 40 years ago. This was a time when petrochemical companies were the heroes of all mankind. If you invented new chemicals, you got medals out of the king's hand. And progress was a holy word. Progress for the industry. And escape was seen as a filthy, dirty word that may be something you did in the dark when people didn't see. In this day and age, 40 years ago, a couple of long-haired hippies arrived on the scene and said that, you know, maybe we should invent less. Or at least that was what the establishment heard. Maybe we should work less. And they even went so far as to found a political party around these ideas, after having driven it for a while. And the establishment went all mad. Are you out of your minds? You can't, can't found a political party because you want to work less. You're just spoiled brats who want everything for free. Well, they said, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let us explain. If it's something we learn from history, it is that it tends to repeat itself over and over again. I'll tell you why I'm here. Sorry. I'm here because I think that there are some things that are unjust in this world. I have chosen to become a politician, not because I want to, but because I feel that I have to. There are things that I think are very unfair and unjust. And I think that the younger generation is being ex exploited and demonized in a way that it doesn't deserve. And I think that many people in the establishment doesn't understand this. And I think that I have to do something about it. I'm not sure what I can do. I am going to do what I can. And that's why I am here. History is repeating itself. And we are getting the exact same treatment as all people have done before us. Every 40 years, a new generation needs to reconquer democracy. So, I mean, it's hard. It's really hard. The industry lobbies, both for the security industry and the copyright industry, have wheelbarrows of cash. They, they can basically just take in this wheelbarrow with lots on, and lots of cash in it and see politicians grab, grab a little here and a little there and be, generally have a good time while doing so. So how do you beat that? How can you possibly beat this immense amount of cash and power that we have stacked against us? Well, it turns out you can do that. Just like the Greens did, that was stacked against the petrochemical industry. That is still, 40 years later, the richest on the planet. It turns out you can do that. Like the workers' movement did, which had every single factory owner on the planet against them. But there is one thing that beats all of this. There is one thing, one thing only, one thing only but there is one thing. And that's votes in a democratic election. The many count more than the rich. The many count more than the powerful. And that's why we will win just like the movements before us. We know that we are right. We know that the world as it looks is unjust. And we know that a whole generation is being mistreated. And not just one generation for that matter. So, what, what happens is that we need to make this 
personal for the politicians who don't care or don't realize that they should care. They're not evil people. They, they just haven't seen what's going on. You sh we, it, we owe it to them to give them a chance to understand what is happening right now because they're not evil. They just, hasn't, they just haven't seen this perspective. And unfortunately, they're not taking a lot of interest in this issue. But there are ways to get their attention. You can take their jobs. That gets their, their attention. Uh, unfortunately, it's one of the few ways that does get their attention. So it actu it's actually enough just to threaten to take their votes. Once you start chipping away at, at the polls, they will start to realize that there's something here they haven't understood. That's actually how it works. And once they realize that there's something they haven't understood that people feel deeply about, they'll start to try to dig into that. So imagine, imagine we were in an election and we came just 1,337 votes short of a place in parliament or seven places, several places in parliament as is, there's the threshold in many places. We would be so disappointed we wouldn't believe it. But what would all the other politicians think at that point? Every single other politician would have one and just one thought in their head. Shit, they're getting in the next time. I better adapt and fast. This is how it works. The instant we start taking votes, and we are! We start changing the world, and we are, we are. The pirate party has a visibility way above its size because people see it, see that we are a growing phenomenon. We are, when I give keynotes on the other side of the planet, in San Francisco, in, in Southeast Asia, I frequently begin by asking, okay, how many in here have heard about the, pir the Swedish Pirate Party before? I actually say Swedish. So the Swedish Pirate Party before, show of hands. I say, okay, so, ev but you don't need to raise your hand. I know you've heard of us, Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> you, about between half and two-thirds raise their hands. And then just, just for the kicks and lulls of it, I say, okay, so how many have heard of any other Swedish political party? Let's see a show of hands. And then what happens then is that everybody takes their hand down, starts looking around and laughs. And I mean, this happens in Europe as well. I mean, you'd, you'd think they've heard of the Social Democrats or Greens or something like that, but they, they don't think of them. So why is that? It's because we're the next generation's civil liberties movement. And people have heard that. People have heard of us. We have a visibility and awareness that it goes way beyond our actual size at this point. And, well, there is this concern that in many cases we aren't taken seriously. And people sort of feel uncomfortable with that and start looking for reasons that maybe it's our geeky statue, maybe it's the name, maybe we need to have more te television time, maybe, well, you know. I think we deserve it. I think that's only fair. I think we are being treated just like any new political party is being treated. It's not our name. It's not that we, don't, that we aren't seen on television. Every single new movement before us was treated just like this. And it may not be fair, but it's the way the world works. If you have a new party coming in a country, they will be met with skepticism until they have proven themselves. It's not our fault. We just to ha have to hang in there, just like we are doing. And it also, it's useful here to remember that the Greens weren't taken seriously even after they were in Parliament. I mean, for heaven's sake, there were hippies with long hair and rubber boots. How would you expect them to be taken seriously among a bunch of suit and ties and stiff upper lips and walk around and they can kind of cool man. I mean, think of a local council. A local council that would put up a factory somewhere 
And all of these stiff ties and okay, I shouldn't do that with a microphone because it's going to sound terrible. All the, with stiff ties, suits, nice polished shoes, splashing ab around in the mud like this, looking at this new plant site somewhere in, somewhere in the field, and thinking about how to put public public transport there and where the workers will live and all of this, like normal city planning, which is part of, after all, the local council's job. And while they're splashing about in the mud with their polished shoes, not pretending they are, of course, all of a sudden comes one of these local hippies. Long hair, hat, rubber boots, staring eyes. Okay, so how will this affect the local environment? And this, these people from the local council just go ballistic. You got to stop this hippie nonsense about the environment. This is a factory. This is about jobs and the economy. It has nothing to do with the bloody environment. Well, that's a really nice river, man. <laughs> We're sometimes... People sometimes disrespect us because we're geeks. We're te we're, we come from a technical background. Well, that's why we understand how technology is reshaping society. The Greens came from professions wh which had close ties to nature. Biologists, field researchers. That's why they were hippies. That's why they had rubber boots. And that's why people didn't understand that they were for real even after they were in Parliament. So we shouldn't take that too seriously. It's the other people that will discover just how serious we are. Also, it helps us that we are working on global issues. I mean, when you have something like WikiLeaks, like the Pirate Bay, like something what what we are working on is things that that's things that that are covered in the entire worldwide press and what happens in 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 the worldwide press when the pirate party does something is that the pirate party of italy did this or the pirate party of switzerland was helping out wikileaks or the pirate party of sweden is saying that they'll host pirate bay in parliament just for the kicks of it which we did <laughs> and what happens is that this is printed in every newspaper around the world. And that helps the local pirate party. We have this huge advantage where everything we do is helping everyone else. And somewhere, I think that's who we are. We are here because we believe in helping others. We believe that you should help those who will never ever in their life be able to repay the debt. We believe that helping others is part of what makes us human. Sharing is caring. And in this, in this world, there are leaders, elected leaders and non-elected leaders, who try to beat the drums of war, who try to demonize another kin, another kin of human beings, as some, somehow being less worthy, somehow being aggressive, wanting to go to war, so we must defend ourselves. We've seen it happen so many times. What we are defending, and what's happening right now, is that we discover, we're discovering that we can talk to these people when I see lines in Arabic in my browser or in Twitter, it just flashes by and then tra is translated into words I can understand. And what I'm realizing is that these human beings are just mothers and fathers who, l who love their children, who, I'm sorry, who want to put nice, nice food on the dinner table and who are just like us. They don't want to go to war. The best they can hope for is to make it home alive. 
our leaders have lost the capacity to lie to us and what we are fighting for is something that will never give them that ability again never ever we are fighting for the right for people to communicate with one another without distortion by authorities without inter intervention by authorities and that has helped me discover so much so much humanity in places I haven't expected it and that oh, thanks so a couple of practical tips to, to, uh, to wrap this up we know what we stand for. We need to own the issues. And by owning issues, I mean whenever a reporter is writing a story about something, you should, they should call us. They should call the Pirate Party and ask, for, and ask for our comment on this story. We're already there in some issues. I mean, we're the file-sharing party. As soon as we become known in, in a country, we're the file-sharing party. But going from there to being the Civil Liberties Party. That's hard work. It took us two and a half years to get there. Being anti-censorship, being pro-reporters rights, being pro-reporters right to protect their sources, being a against wiretapping, want on wiretapping. And it takes time. It takes perseverance. But then again, we're not politicians because we think it's a quick career move. We're politicians because we feel we have to. And this places us in a, in a, actually in a quite funny situation in uh, election campaigns, because we, we find ourselves fighting for journalists' rights. And journalists are discovering this. In the last election campaign, in the last couple of weeks before the election, then the Associate, association of reporters sent out press releases supporting our policy. In essence, we're not that far from being a journalist's party. And that's not really a bad situation to be in in an election campaign. <laughs> and last but not least, have fun. We're we need to choose to have fun along the way because we'll be in this for a long time. The world isn't changed overnight. But I feel that it's worth it for me personally and that it's something I cannot, it's a fight I cannot choose to ignore. So I need to choose to have fun along the way. And it's not just for me personally. It's also for the good of the movement, because people will go to other people who are having fun. If you're bored, people will ignore you. If you're having fun and laughing, people will join you. We were even discussing this as part of our parliamentary strategy before, before the past election, when we were preparing to enter parliament, which we unfortunately didn't, but that's a separate story. As we would have so fun in Parliament, it would be part of basically psychological warfare against the other parties, who were, who were just bickering among themselves, trying to, to outmaneuver one another, and we would just laugh and have fun as much as we could. Well, as a side effect, we would be enjoying ourselves. That's not bad. Having fun while changing the world isn't the worst thing you can do, especially not while changing it for the better. I have one final thing to ask of you. One final thing. Forty years from now, it's quite likely that the Pirate Party movement and Pirate Parties all over the world will consist of career politicians. The founders of the Green Movement sometimes bump into me and other, le and other leaders and founders of Pirate Parties and they're, they're treating us like, like their sons and daughters. Because they see in our passion, in our ideals, that we are fighting to make the world a better place, just like they did 40 years ago. 
we're carrying on their legacy. We're carrying on the cycles of history. So I have uh, something to ask of you. In 40 years, those of us who are still around, it's likely that a couple of young spoiled brats will want everything for free all over again. Help them. Help them succeed, just like we did. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to meeting you all again next time around. Cheers. Safe travels. <laughs>